So today Borderlands is going to get a pretty hefty hotfix that has a lot of changes to basically everything. Weapon manufacturers, boss drops and all that, but most importantly I guess some of the actual Vault Hunters including a buff to our boy Zane. These changes don't actually go live until a few hours time so we can't show what our gameplay looks like just yet. Also not to mention, I might sound a bit weird, I am currently in Philadelphia for the Overwatch League. Miska's in the background, say hello Miska. Hello. So like it's a bit of a weird video to make. Sorry if we can't show any comparisons or anything like that, but this change is pretty big and it's, a, it's like a typical Overwatch video. This really just sort of going over the patch notes, talking about what's changed and the impact they may have. The best thing about these patch notes is that Gearbox listened to some of the feedback that I and a lot of people on Reddit gave when they didn't give any reasoning as to the changes. They've actually written pretty hefty paragraphs on each of the aspects, including Zane. We'll go over the changes real quickly and then they give context as to why they've changed it. The Digiclone damage as a whole has been increased by 38%, which is pretty big, and the drone damage has been increased by 50%. Some of the augments have been changed too. The one that changes all of the bullet damage to cryo bullets, making it freeze targets. It used to have a damage penalty before, it used to do 20% less damage, you know, like a give and take of the effect, but they've removed that completely. So cryo bullets, in comparison to before, do 70% more damage than they used to. The drone rocket damage, another augment that I personally like and have been using in my Zane build, that damage has been increased by 50%, which is pretty good. And the almighty ordnance, which is the rocket barrage ability that you can use, the damage has been increased there by 75%. So all of the abilities have had their damage increased, and this is what they said about Zane. Zane's gadgets were great at providing additional utility, but lacked impact as players leveled up. We increased the Digiclone damage with all equipped weapons so the skill can scale better with players as they get to higher levels and harder content. The drone requires a lot of player involvement to take full advantage of its damage output and increasing the base damage as well as the augments will greatly increase the drone's versatility and rewards players even more for using it effectively. Which is pretty good, like it's just a base buff for Zane. A lot of the aspects, no matter what build you're trying to run with Zane, whether you're trying to run somewhere similar to what I've been doing with the Hitman build or do a bit more of a cryo build, now that the drone cryo bullet to do a lot more damage you can get away with doing a lot more and it's a lot more effective and with some of the other nerfs to the characters it definitely puts him on par and it might make some of those non-viable builds for Zane a lot better and a lot more worth your time but Amara and Flak also got changed themselves we'll go over Amara very quickly the Guardian Angel ability it's just a normal talent where if you get downed in the brawl tree you instantly come back up with full health and it has a bit of a cooldown not too long. It's similar to New You, but you get downed, you instantly come back up with 100% health. That has been reduced to 50%, so you don't instantly come up with full health anymore. Also, an augment for Amara in the Brawl Tree, where enemies damaged by your action skill become confused and temporarily attack their allies. It had a damage decrease of 30% because of using this augment. That's now been reduced to 10. So a little bit of a buff, a little bit of a nerf, not too much. You don't really need to worry, Amara players. Flat players, though, specifically using the Fadeaway build, things are a little bit more rough. It, of course, affects the gorillas in the mist augment which turns it from this firing free shot to do higher percentage of crit damage to being able to use it over a duration but it does less this of course has been used to kill bosses with like king's call queen's call lyuda we'll talk about those in a second but gorillas in the mist its duration has been decreased from eight seconds to six and the critical damage bonus that you get has been reduced from 50 percent to 25 percent gearbox said this gorillas in the mist bonuses greatly outweighed its penalty to the base skill we don't want to remove the playstyle completely but the overall damage output had to be slightly adjusted because it was outperforming other builds we're monitoring the changes and may make another change to the ammo return in a future patch so they're keeping an eye on flak and even giving us a bit of a hint onto what they may change in the future but i think that this really sort of targeted the base of the problem. Flak as a whole I don't think is too strong in general, like his master build with his pets isn't particularly standout, but the issue is built around fadeaway, using that, getting a hard hitting critting weapon, melting bosses with it. It's really easy to put together, hence why we didn't do a build on it. It's been like, oh yeah, fish and chips goes great together. I'm going to make a video on how great that is. Like, people know. You don't need to explain it to them why that's sort of the case. So having that nerfed, I think, is good for Flak. It makes him a lot weaker, and I mean a lot weaker in that regard. But I think it's a fair change, to be honest. But that's not all. Not only does it have to affect certain weapons like sniper rifles and pistols, but also manufacturers. Maliwan, Atlas, Dahl, TDR are all in this list and have all had changes that again Gearbox have gone into detail as to why they've changed them. I think the most notable thing is to change to pistols. Pistols are very strong depending on the manufacturer of course, but some of them are a little bit undertuned, so they have had their damage increased and decreased depending on the manufacturer. We'll go over the buffs. TDR, Dahl and Children of Devolt have had their damage increased for pistols 
For TD on Dahl it's 15%, for COV it's 20%. But for Jacobs and Tog fans, you're not going to like this. The damage has been decreased for Jacobs by 15% and Tog pistols by 10. Making Tog a lot weaker now with the nerfs that went out last week. And Jacob pistols, as much as people love them, are a little bit weaker. Not massively, I think stuff is still pretty strong, like the Flood as an example, or stuff like the Companion. But these are the patch notes. Jacobs and Tog pistols were outperforming other manufacturers, dealing damage to a group of enemies at a much higher rate than other pistols. This change keeps their identity intact, with Jacobs, you know, ricocheting off to other targets and also Tog, you know, being Tog, but it reduces overall group control. TD Dahl and Children of the Vault had manufacturer penalties that affected their overall damage. Increasing the overall damage will overcome some of the penalties while retaining their unique gameplay style and feel. I always felt like I kind of wanted to do a tier list before the game came out on all of the different gun manufacturers, and I was really disappointed in TD Doll, and to a lesser extent Children of the Vault, not as much, but now that their damage has been increased, it gives you more of an incentive to use them. I don't know what legendaries this may affect, but it's certainly worth keeping an eye out for on what this may increase and what it may make a lot stronger. But I think the major change is to really keep an eye out on too when it comes to weapon types, a sniper rifle. Sniper rifles in Borderlands are... For the most part pretty underpowered, especially some of the legendary ones which are mentioned here by name which we'll go over shortly, but they've had some pretty big buffs. Critical damage has been increased by 20%, fire rate has been increased by 15%, time to ADS has been reduced by 15% meaning that you can scope in and out a lot quicker, and time to actually equip the weapon has been reduced by 20%. Sniper rifles deal high damage but felt a little cumbersome to use in certain scenarios. This change will increase their overall damage and increase usability in more combat engagement. You can use sniper rifles now basically. When I saw these changes, I definitely wanted to highlight the Storm Legendary, which I've sort of talked about in another video, but then I noticed that Maliwan has also had it buffed. Maliwan weapon damage overall has been increased by 25% and the fire rate has been increased by 20%. This of course has a lot to do with their really slow wind-up times, the fact that they have to charge, so Gearbox said this. That basically Maliwan weapons had reduced overall damage because they applied dots that did a high rate of damage. This effect was toned down before launch, but the overall damage was not sufficiently adjusted to compensate for the reduction in elemental dots. Basically it was nerfed but not readjusted to make it stronger in another area. We're adding back some of the overall damage and making the weapons faster so elemental elemental builds so that elemental builds can really take advantage of Maliwan weaponry. Have fun Amara players. They weren't the only ones that got buffed though, actually Atlas got a damage increase overall too by 25%. Like it's a good amount of damage that all of these weapons have been increased by. Atlas weapons relied on a gameplay loop that we felt gave players a great advantage when used correctly. It's not used if the damage doesn't compensate for the time to set it up. The whole putting out a tracker puck and then using it. So now the damage on Atlas weapons should facilitate players using them in general on top of feeling badass when they take advantage of the Atlas technology. I really like Atlas guns in this game, but I feel by now most people have got legendaries that they're already using, but I am curious to know how these changes will affect particular legendary guns. That's something I want to do when I get back. You know, pick out all of the Dahl, TDO weapons that have been buffed and be like, hey, you want to be getting this legendary now if you can get it, instead of, you know, putting it in your bank and having the bank completely cleared like it did for me. That was fun. But there's also some miscellaneous adjustments too to specific weapons from specific manufacturers. For example, Jacob's assault rifles damage has been increased by 20%. Dahl SMGs have had another increase of 10%. Flood off heavy weapon damage has been increased by 25%. And E-Tech TDR shotgun damage has been increased by 50%. The Jacob's assault rifle change was to differentiate the assault rifle from the pistol as more of a mid to long range powerhouse. Since the assault rifle is low mag size compared to other assault rifles, you're getting a slight increase increased overall damage to compensate. Dahl SMGs had their fire rate adjusted down before launch, but their damage was never sufficiently increased, so they should feel a lot more appropriate compared to other SMGs. And the Vladov heavy weapon damage has been increased to share in the full heavy weapon treatment. Again, that's not all. Now we get onto the specific legendary changes. King and Queen's Call were nerfed and hit pretty hard with their fire rate changes by 50%. And that weapon that I mentioned, the Maliwan Sniper, the Storm and the Firestorm, have their charge times reduced to one second down from two. I think this is a really strong change and it certainly puts the Storm on the map of being a really interesting weapon to use. We're going to be making a larger comprehensive legendary gear pass 
which I'm excited for actually, but we have included the following changes. Kings and Queens call were modified to lower the fire rate. The weapon has a limited burst shot count, so overall the feel of the gun isn't dramatically affected. This gave me a sigh of relief because I really like the King and Queens call. I think they're one of the most interesting weapons to get and really easy to farm. Just go fight Tyreen and you'll be able to pick up a couple of them in different elements. So these are pretty strong still. I still think it's a weapon that's worth getting, uh, but I'm really interested in the Firestorm and Storm, both of which I think were some of the worst like legendaries in the game. Now with this change and the increase to Maliwan damage and then also the stuff with snipers, it might put these legendary guns on the map as stuff that you may really want to get. Grave Ward, the boss that everybody's been farming for the last two weeks, has had a few changes. Apparently his beam attacks didn't properly scale based on level, so at higher levels the two beam attacks hardly phased players, which I agree with. Players will find this attack to be more lethal now, so be careful of that. In addition, Grave Ward is a very large enemy and is too easily susceptible to elemental damage. Unlike the other large bosses, elemental damage on Grave Ward is now greatly reduced, but to compensate, Grave Ward's overall health was reduced, making it still easy to farm him, basically. He has 20% less health, and is more resistant to elemental damage by 70%, so that's pretty major. The changes to the elemental resistance are as followed. The elemental chance resistance is increased by 70%, meaning that you won't set him on fire. The resistance has been increased by 30%, and the dot duration was taken down to 30%. So again, still farmable, not a major change, but it means that you don't just one-shot him with Amara as an example. So sorry, Amara players, you can't do that anymore from the looks of it. Finally, there's some more miscellaneous changes that I felt were worth highlighting too. Hollow Point Guardian rank has been temporarily disabled, this was the Guardian Ranked Talon in the left tray, the bottom one, where if you kill an enemy it causes an explosion, which is really good for mobbing, doing proving rounds, but it does explosive damage to you and to your team, making it really difficult if you're running into a group that all have this talent. So it's been disabled for now, whilst they try and fix it. Fault Hunters should no longer scream when affected by a dot while shields are active. Sorry Zane players, sorry most players, I know you enjoy that all the time. Then the machines will now be restocked with higher quality items of the day. Good, because I've never bought one in my life. And adjusted a visual concern on Malawan shotguns with cryo element. And a legendary loot drop has been balanced throughout the game. Crew challenge enemies will drop their intended specific loot. Okay, this is interesting. And some enemies like Troy and the Rampager will be a bit more stingy and no longer drop legendaries every kill. This is pretty important because Troy and the Rampager drop the Occultist and the Quartermizer every single time. So I'm going to go and have to redo my video that I've got coming out in a couple of days because of that. That's great. But that's a lot of changes. Zane, Flak, Amara, TDO, Dal, Maliwan, Snipers, Pistols, all changed. All pretty big changes as well, making the game a lot more fun. But I'm really interested to see what they do about these legendaries as well. I'm trying to get them all together compile them and then compare what they used to be like and what they are now. I'm going to try and do that, but I'm also going to try and enjoy my weekend in Philadelphia. I'm really excited to try out these changes. They go live later today, so we don't have gameplay of them just yet. I'll have a bit of a play. I have quite a free day tomorrow, so I'll just be able to sort of try them out for a bit and see if there's anything worth noting, but pretty exciting for the changes and what's coming in the future. So I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you soon.